Uh, so with the first video uh, for this section, we uh, showed you, um, talked a little bit about confidence intervals, how they're constructed, what the margin of error actually is. Um, and we did a sample problem. And the sample problem we did was uh, constructing a confidence interval when we know what the population standard deviation is. Uh, for this section, there's another technique that's used when we're doing a, a constructing a confidence interval around a mean when the standard deviation is unknown. When I say the standard deviation is unknown, I mean the population standard deviation is unknown. Um, so with that being the case, let's look at this first homework question here. It's number seven. This is from the homework. Construct the confidence interval for the population mean mu using the T distribution. The T, uh, assume the population population is normally distributed. So my confidence level is 0 0.99, X bar is 14.3, uh, S is 3, and N is 7. Uh, so when we put all this stuff into StatCrunch, and I'm going to pull StatCrunch up and show you how to do this in just a second, you, um, there's your 14.3, there's your 3, there's your 7. We click this button here, put the 0 0.99, click Compute, and we get a confidence interval that rounds, rounded to one decimal place, is 10.1 to 18.5, which we see right here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and go to StatCrunch and show you how to do, how to find T stats and how, uh, how to, to do this. So I'm pulling StatCrunch up, and let's get rid of this. Stat, T stats, one sample with a summary. My sample mean is 14.3. My sample standard deviation is 3. And my sample size is 7. And when I click Compute, whoops, I forgot a button. Sorry about that. I'm going to hit Options, Edit. I need to change this confidence interval to 99%. So when I click Compute, we have, and I'm going to go ahead and pull this up so you can see them side by side. You see 10.1 to 18.5. And again, here's T stats, what it looks, what the, the box looks like. So. We'll go ahead and leave that one, and we'll go back. I'm going to close these out because I'm going to need them again in a minute, and we will go back to our document. And you'll notice what you just saw what matches up with the display you see right here, which is a screenshot from StackCrunch. Okay, so that is one problem. Now let's look at an application problem, uh, again, where the, the standard deviation is, the population standard deviation is unknown. So in this one, we say in a random sample of eight people, the mean driving distance to work was 22.8 miles, and the standard deviation was 4.8 miles. Assume the population is normally distributed and use the T distribution to find the margin of error and construct a 95% confidence interval, interval for the population mean mu. Interpret the results. So there's my mean, and I've color-coded everything. Uh, standard deviation right here in the green, uh, whatever color this is, random sample of 8 is n equals 8, and the confidence level is 95%. So when I plug this in, 22.8, 4.8, 8, hit my radio button down here, 0 0.95. When I click compute, I get 18 point, this rounds to 18.8 .8 to 26.8. Well, I can use my formula. 26.8 minus 18.8 divided by 2. Well, that's going to be 8 divided by 2 is 4. All right, so that gives me my margin of error. My confidence interval is given with the upper and lower limit. So how do I interpret this? Well, here's where a common mistake is with uh, confidence intervals. Remember, we're making an inference from a sample to a population. So what we're saying is we're 95% confident that the population mean driving distance to work in miles is between the interval's endpoints. No, we're not 100% sure. We're 95% certain the actual population mean will be found somewhere in between those two points. 
So that confidence level can be changed. We've seen that already. Um, so that's how you would do this application problem. Now, before we leave this video, I want to tell you that this idea of finding the margin of error, we can also do that with StatCrunch without using this formula. And I want to demonstrate that. So I'm going to read this to you. There is a way to use StatCrunch to calculate your margin of error. The width sample size function allows you to determine the width of the confidence interval. Since we construct a confidence interval by adding and subtracting the margin of error from the best point estimate, that could be X bar, or later on we're going to do this with P hat, then double the margin of error will always be the width of the confidence interval. Divide the width of the confidence interval by 2 and you have the margin of error. So algebraically, 2E equals W. When we use StatCrunch crunch to calculate the width of the interval, which for this problem rounds to 8.0, we divide this width by 2, and we have our margin of error of 4. See the display below. And I'm going to go into StatCrunch and do this. So we have a confidence level of 0.95, standard deviation of 4.8, and a sample size of 8. And when we press compute, this is the, what we're going to get right here. So how do we access this in StatCrunch? We're going to go back to StatCrunch. And again to T stats, again to one sample, but this time I'm coming down here to the bottom. See this width sample size? We're going to use this later for finding minimum sample sizes. And what was that standard deviation? 4.8. And my sample size was 8. When I click compute, there you see 8.02, which if I round that, to one decimal place, it's 8.0, and I divide that by 2, that equals 4. So I hope you find this video helpful. We'll have two or three more for this section, but this should get you through at least half of the homework anyway. We are going to learn how to use, I want to show this to you, proportion stats before we get done with this section. So uh, again, hope this helps. Good luck.